Dr. Benji. Okay, good afternoon, good morning, good evening everyone. Nasaan man po kayo sa parte ng mundo? Maraming maraming salamat po sa pagdalo at pag-attend po ng ating Stop COVID Deaths webinar series. We are now on our 65th installment or 65th episode po and we are glad that you're able to join us today as we continue to spread the word about our credible online community and bring you timely and informative topics in our COVID-19 learning journey together. And aside from the crisis brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic, teenage pregnancy is yet another emergency in the Philippines that started way before the pandemic. As of the year 2019, the Population Commission or the Commission on Population and Development reported 178,000 births to teenage mothers. So medyo malaki po yun. And uh, if we put it another way, that is nearly 500, limang daang mga bata giving birth sa mga bata din po each and every day and that's something that we wanted to shine uh, a light on and a focus in today's topic po and we have uh, today invited several uh, different experts po in their fields to talk about this very important topic I'm Dr. Raymond Francis Sarmiento Director of the National Telehealth Center National Institutes of Health University of the Philippines, Manila Always a pleasure to be with all of you during our regular Friday lunch date and always looking forward po Uh, very happy that uh, my partner was able to join us. Uh, she is our adjunct research faculty at the National Telehealth Center and also the special envoy of the President for Global Health Initiatives, Dr. Susi Pineda Mercado. Dr. Susi? Hi, good afternoon, Raymond. At magandang hapon po sa inyo lahat wherever you are. Uh, I was able to come on time and uh, just happy to be with you also, Raymond, this afternoon. Ano yung sinabi ni Raymond? Napaisip ako, Raymond, you know, If we stop and think about 500 young girls giving birth every day during this pandemic, no? um, it's really something that, as you said, we should shine a light on. And ang maganda naman sa ating credible online community is that even with all our own, our all own personal, personal hardships and trials, we still have the energy to think about those who really, 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 really need extra help. And I would think, of course, today we're going to talk about teenage pregnancy and COVID-19. We're going to think, of, we're going to talk about sabi nga, children giving birth to children. And I think we want to talk about prevention, but we also want to talk about what is the extra care we need to give To all these young girls who are going through a very difficult, a very difficult time. So welcome to the webinar, everyone. Uh, I can see yung mga usual uh, regular viewers natin and dito Raymond. And uh, we will open our webinar with our person on the street, our interviews done by TVUP. TVUP, over to you. Friends, I 
go to school in a very diverse school. Pumisita po ako once or twice. And very, uh, hindi ko nagandam na may pandemic in some communities. The people are still going out, still interacting, uh, business as usual. And these interactions include po siya kayo mga landian sa gilid. At um, I was talking to someone who once casually mentioned na parang nagpalaglag siya before because she got pregnant. Uh, during the time of COVID. Meron po dito sa community namin may, na parang 19 years old po na nanganak po during pandemic. Dito po kasi sa community, medyo common na po yung ganyan. Maraming mga uh, teenage, uh, case ng teenage pregnancy. Uh, sa kanya po kasi talaga, dahil nanganak na po siya dun sa public hospital, dun sa hospital ng Maynila, Uh, doon na rin po niya pinili. Tapos, um, kumbaga, chinaga niya lang na, na pumila doon for the prenatal uh, check-up. Tapos, ano pa po siya, cesarean pa po yung kanyang delivery. The stories that I've heard um, and seen with my own two eyes is yung kakulangan ng sexual education. Kasi most of the girls who have gotten pregnant that I know of really came from communities where tabo, pag-usapan ang sex and sex ed. Doon sa line din po ng work ko, kasama rin po yan sa gender and development. One major reason po dyan yung pagtigil doon sa access sa health uh, reproductive health services ng mga kababaihan at syempre ng mga kalalakihan din. So yung yung Pagbibigay po natin ng mga tinatawag na commodities, yung contraceptives, yung family planning method, yung counseling, natigil po talaga siya. Said, uh, so, well, I definitely want to be optimistic and say that first, the things will get better. But uh, it really has to start the school's needs na. Kasi there are still a lot of conservative teachers na the way they teach sex education is very dogmatic. Malaking pag-ask sa yung pag makikita mo yung mga healthcare workers and yung mga um, concerned citizen, yung mga CSO, yung mga NGO. Siyempre dun sa colleagues mo na um, kaya palang harapin ito kung papakinggan or magiging mas participative yung mga policy making sa government natin at yung mga, nag, yung mga policy implementers din. Thank you very much, TVUP. It's always good to start with uh, what what's happening on the ground. And I think we heard some very real life stories about teenage pregnancies. And we have a very exciting group of speakers. So wag po kayong aalis kasi star-studded na naman tayo ngayon. Pero Raymond, did you want to talk about the certificates of attendance and some other announcements? Go ahead, Raymond. Thank you, Dr. Susie. Uh, before we go on to the certificates, po, no, uh, we have it on flash on the screen. Uh, we have already sent out all the all the certificates for those who are eligible to receive them for the previous 64 webinars that we have hosted. Again, uh, we would like to ask for those who still do not have, well, at least have not yet received any certificates po, no, in any from 1 to 64, please let us know. And uh, by emailing stopcovidets at up.edu.ph and our team will get to uh, will reach out to you uh, with regards to your question. For today's um, webinar, we also would like to uh, well extend our gratitude po no and greet all the members uh, uh, of the Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society or POGS watching us from all over the country. Uh, POGS is the premier organization composed of highly competent obstetrician gynecologists providing excellent reproductive health care and we are grateful that they have partnered with us on this very important topic. Uh, and for those who are asking also, since uh, we are going back to sort of our mainstream structure po, no? Uh, for those who are joining us for the very first time, either you are watching us in the live streaming in Facebook Uh, of the Stop COVID Deaths page, uh, the UP page, and that the TVUP page, 
or whether you're uh, logged in in the YouTube channel po of TVUP, we always start with um, a set of presentations from our two speakers and then followed with reactions uh, from our esteemed uh, panelists. Uh, very, very short reactions po, pa, followed by a set of uh, question and answers uh, during the panel discussion. And then we will be usually invite someone from the audience to ask their questions live to our panelists. So please, uh, uh, po, encourage uh, and tell all of your family, friends, and relatives po. And those who you are working with, if uh, they, well, as, at least if they are interested and uh, are free to join us, please uh, let them know we are able to accommodate in the Zoom webinar up to 3,000 attendees. So please uh, let us know and we will be more than happy to accommodate them. Over to you, Dr. Susie. Thank you very much, Raymond. And uh, i just like to welcome all our other panelists who are here. As I said, we've got a very exciting group of speakers, but we're going to start with the president of the Philippine Obstetrics and Gynecological Society. Uh, this is Dr. Benjamin Cuenca, who will be giving us our opening remarks and binabati natin lahat ng mga tagapogs na nakikinig ngayon. I understand that we have representatives from all over the country. Uh, Dr. Cuenca, please go ahead and uh, you might want to, to show your face first before you go to the slides. Ayan, ayan. We can see you, okay. sir. Okay. Hi. Good afternoon, Dr. Susie and Dr. Raymond. Yes, uh, how are sir? How are you, Dr. Cuenca? Mabuti po naman. And uh, I wish everyone is all just the same. And I welcome everyone to TBUP. And on my capacity as president of the Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society, I am very happy to uh, be here with you this afternoon to give these welcome remarks. Okay, go ahead po, Dr. Cuenca. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, listed among the flagship programs of the POGS in 2021 is the Society's plan to launch the advocacy to prevent teenage pregnancy. Sir, in sorry, that, sir. I think right. we have to go to we have to go to slide show view. Mukang naka ano tayo naka. Yes, sir. We are seeing your notes. Sana you para po medyo malaki din po ang ano sir. Is it the icon that looks like uh looks like a screen? Yung ba yan, Raymond? No, it's that if you if you log out and then click on the bottom part of the yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, nakikita po kayo ngayon. Yeah. Uh, so now let's see how you okay. Let's see. Yes, okay. Cool. Thank you so Wonderful. much. Wonderful. <laughs> Ganda naman, sir. Ganda ng opening slide nyo. Okay, go ahead, pa. Go ahead, Doctor BJ. Thank you, sir. Okay. Um. Good afternoon again to everyone. Um. Alam po ninyo, uh, since 2000, itong 2021, it has been our advocacy to really work into uh, the issue of teenage pregnancy. In fact, in our town hall meeting in April, this was one of our um, uh, items in the agenda that the 4,890 members of the POGS agreed on to delve this year at least, so that the POGS being the premier society that takes care of and promotes women's health care, okay, is now, um, has already uh, put under one subgroup all the pre-existing um, advocacy programs which are related to teenage pregnancy. These are the Adolescent Health Issues and Perspective, which was founded in 2004, the PREPARE, or the Preparatory Reproductive Health Education Priming Young Adults for Responsible Engagement, which was institutionalized in 2017, the POGS Task Force on Family Planning, and of course, the Gender-Based Violence Project, which was founded in 2003. Being the premier society that promotes and ensures the highest quality of women's health care, we want to put an end on teenage pregnancy. And we cannot do that as a private institution or a academic institution uh, responsible only for as a non-government um, 
society. We have to hinge. We have to work with government institutions like the PAPCOM, which has been we have been doing since last year, and of course with the Department of Health. So that the POGS with its prepare project last year has already dealt and started working with PAPCOM, okay, in in uh, training counselors and teachers in Samuanga City, where intensive education for um, health education and sex education has been discussed with counselors and teachers. This year, we are working with the teachers and guidance counselors in the secondary schools in Mimaropa. Indeed, we are endorsing comprehensive sexuality education. So that with this, ang unang laban po ni Nene, okay, ay mangyayari sa August 20, at ito po ay tinatawag naming bahay-bahayan, karanasan ni Nene, kung saan inimbitahan natin ang Undersecretary Diosdado M. San Antonio of the Department of Health, and of course, the Executive Director of, of um, Likaan Center for Women's Health, Ms. Uh, Dr. Junis Lirza Melgar. Hindi po namin ito lulubayan. Ito po ang ating programa na ipag-iimbita rin namin sa inyo. Okay? Pagkatapos po nito, ang pangalawang laban para kay Nene ang mangyayari sa katapusan ng Agosto. Ito po ay sa August 31, kung saan bukod sa PAPCOM at sa Department of Health, nag-imbita rin po kami ng ating uh, legal counselors at hopefully si Senator Risa Ontiveros para madiscuss ang mga um, batas para mapangalagaan ang ating mga batang kababaihan against teenage pregnancy. The POGS is now working hand-in-hand -hand with all the other related health societies like yung panawagan ng uh, PPS President Dr. Jocelyn Eusebio where we are now calling on the Philippine Congress to immediately pass a law that increases the age of statutory, statutory rape to below 16 years of age. And with that, as I have said, hindi po lulubayan ng POGS ang labang ito para kay Nene. Patuloy po namin gagawin and strong collaboration will be uh, always um, ready okay, to work with government as well as non-government agencies to be able to put an end sa sinasabi nating violence being committed to young female children of our country. Maraming salamat po. Hey, thank you very much. That's Dr. Benjamin Cuenca, the president of the, um, sorry, Dr. Benjamin Cuenca, president of the Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society. And again, we would like to welcome all of the members of POGS who are here with us uh, today. And um, we are we are going to talk about, um, it's, it's very heartening to see this, uh, this huge effort that POGS is making to to address the issue of teenage pregnancy. But we're going to hear a little bit more about teenage pregnancy in the country. And what happens when we have all of these pregnant girls during COVID? Because we know that even before COVID, it's very difficult for them to access healthcare services. Ano pa kaya ngayon na may COVID, no? So itong concern natin talaga na in terms of prevention, in terms of taking care of our girls, it's become more difficult during the pandemic. So I think we'd all like to know what the situation is and what we can collectively do, what we can collectively do. So I'm very honored to introduce our um, main presenter, who I've also known for the longest time. We were together in the core group or the lead team of uh, then Secretary Juan Flavier. And um, so we worked together with Manong Johnny and I'm very happy to see that he has continued in an area that was very dear to the heart of Secretary Flavier, which is population and family planning. So uh, may I welcome uh, the Undersecretary and Executive Director of the Commission on Population and Development, or PAPCOM, Dr. Juan Perez III, or GP. GP, welcome to the webinar. Thank you very much, uh, 
talk, Susie. Um, it's been 30 years since the oh, OAC. No, don't tell them how long. <laughs> If we met at the OH. Ako, nahihiya ko kay Raymond kasi hindi pa napapanak si Raymond noon. Oh my yes, goodness. Yes, it's been a while. It's been a while. And, and I think it's really great to see you continue that vision of Mano Johnny Flavier. And um, I think it'd be very sad to hear about what's happening in terms of teenage pregnancy. So uh, please go ahead and tell us what's what's going on and what do we need to do. Go ahead, GP. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Raymond. And of course, for the nice words of Dr. Cuenca, we're really going to collaborate uh, with the private sector, particularly POGS, as we move forward in uh, this work. Uh, allow me now to share my screen. Let me move to the... to the top of my presentation, sorry. It appears uh, uh, to be a long presentation, but I hope it, it will be informative and it will set the ground for our discussion this noon time. So thank you everyone, the panelists uh, for being here and uh, you know everyone in this webinar. Um, I'd like to talk about how we can address uh, teen pregnancy in the Philippines, not only uh, Pre-COVID, but also in the time of COVID, and some findings that we have found, we have seen in the last uh, 15 months. No? Uh, so I will cover what we know about teen pregnancy in the Philippines. Uh, in a way, also that my second portion will be to explain what factors are contributing to and uh, what are consequences of teen pregnancy in this country. Uh, factors that have led to PAPCOM and uh, NEDA calling for uh, the government to consider teen pregnancy and national emergency even before um, COVID. And what interventions are going on right now uh, in the time of COVID, uh, but uh, also even before COVID and uh, way forward. What, what uh, should we, con uh, what are we doing now that we should continue and what are new ideas to move forward in this issue? So what do we know about teen pregnancy in this country? We have uh, been benefited by looking at the young adult fertility sexuality study done by the Population Institute with the BRDF. The, uh, there have been uh, three uh, major uh, studies in the last 20 years that have shown that young Filipinos have continued to uh, um, be more active, uh, more engaged in risky sexual activity with no sec uh, significant protection. No? Uh, and uh, we have seen that in the past, it was uh, particularly in 2002, it was the males who were quite more active and females less so, but by 2013, um, there was uh, among the 15 to 19 years old, uh, they were almost in an equal place. Now that uh, as many young women and girls were already engaged in premarital sex as uh, males, now up to 25% among the 15 to 19 years old. Now we are concerned about uh, unintended pregnancies, uh, particularly among uh, young people, but. Uh, because of their association with adverse consequences in terms of health and social uh, outcomes uh, for the mother and for the child. And even more so when the mother is a child herself. Uh, and we consider in this country um, uh, up to 18 years old as uh, children, pediatrics, uh, in the pediatric population. Now the number of mothers age 15 to 19 who are, pre who are uh, uh, giving birth, uh, we have seen a decline since 2016, gradually declining to 178. And this happened during a period when there was greater awareness about teen pregnancy as a problem. However, during the same period, we have seen an increase in uh, 10 to 14 year old uh, pregnancies, live births. No? It's now up to seven live births uh, per day uh, among 10 to 14 year old girls 
in this country. And uh, Secretary Cabral has said it's good news that there's a decline, but still one pregnant teenager is one pregnant teenager too many, and we need to look at those younger than 15 who have become pregnant because of their individual stories that collectively uh, should, uh, you know, tickle our conscience. Now, where is birth uh, happening in this country? 2019 showed that five cities in the MCR, Quezon City, Manila, Caloocan, Pasig, and uh, Antipolo, which is outside MCR, were among the highest uh, number of, uh, uh, showed the highest number of teen births. No? Because the sheer number of the population, one third of the population is in MCR and surrounding regions. But uh, Cebu City ranked uh, relatively high. Yeah, and uh, it was the sole city representing uh, Visayas. And Mindanao had four other slots. Now, Davao City registering the highest, and it's considered uh, the place where percentage-wise we have the highest number of teen pregnancies in the country. As well, uh, we note Sambuanga City, and it's good that folks is doing something there. Cagayan de Oro and General Santos City. So these four cities in Mindanao are where we are seeing uh, outside of NCR the large number of teen births. We're also concerned about repeat pregnancy. And uh, among the 10 to 70 year old girls, now these are the minors who are giving birth, who have given birth and there are around 60,000 of them every year, 5,000 of them at its height in 2015 gave birth to a second pregnancy. And this has remained uh, relatively stable and going up again to 4,600 from 4,500 the previous year up to 2018. So there is a significant number of repeat pregnancies among minors in this country who are giving birth. We also noted based on PSA data of, on birth certificates that uh, up to two thirds around the, of, uh, of uh, those who reported their ages were older than the mother, 20 years or, or older, some going up to 70 years old. These were the um, partners of these uh, young mothers. No? When you look at just the minors no, below 18 and only 16,000 or a third were about the same age of the mother. And which is why it's not uh, surprising that a good number of adolescent women, 15 to 19, report uh, violence during their pregnancy. And they are the largest uh, group of women among all women giving, uh, um, who are pregnant at any given time. They are the ones who are reporting the most numbers of, uh, of violence. And it may be linked to the fact that many of their partners are, uh, have an, they have an unequal relationship with their with the partners most of the time. When it comes to health, uh, we have noted in 2019, among the 1,458 uh, uh, maternal mortalities reported, uh, 177 of them were among 10 to 19 year old uh, women. Three, 10 to 14, 44 at 15 to 17. So 47 of them were among minors and 70 were among 18 to 19 years old. What we are seeing at the community level is that uh, teen mothers are starting families at the rate of around uh, 166,000. Now this year we are uh, projecting that 166,000 plus families will be led by minors throughout the country. This will include 60,000 plus who will give birth in 2021 and about 100,000 minors who continue to be heads of their families uh, from previous uh, years. So this is a growing number and uh, we think it will be among the highest numbers uh, ever since we started tracking this uh, group. Another dimension of adolescent pregnancy we were looking at is uh, how much can a teen mother who is uh, earn compared to other uh, teenagers who did not become pregnant. Now, childbearing 
has been shown to reduce the, the earnings, uh, particularly because uh, they are not able to complete high school. And uh, for peace of DSWD is reporting the most, that one of the most common reasons why uh, children drop out of the four piece program is because of teen pregnancy. So that uh, the losses uh, the, uh, that these uh, young uh, teenage women bear every year is, at the, uh, is around 33 billion pesos every year, which is about 1% of the GDP. So this is lost income for teenage girls who need them the most. This is coming from a study by Alex Serin for UNFPA. And another study that came out uh, early in the pandemic was a study made by the UP Population Institute. And they were projecting that the health crisis can create another crisis, particularly among adolescents, uh, predicting that there could be up to 102,000 unintended pregnancies among adolescents if there were the worst case scenario. And uh, they were saying that uh, community quarantines would uh, have uh, impact particularly due to lower services or non-availability of services to teenagers. And uh, uh, the increase would be at around 21.4 period, assuming nine and a half months of quarantine. No, so, uh, um, it was uh, the context that the UPPI said was that with economic slowdowns, travel restrictions, physical distancing, um, all of this would lead to um, a lowered uh, provision and access to essential sexual reproductive health services at the community level. Now, another study that was done by uh, the Commission on Population and uh, Health Futures showed that uh, women in general, uh, and our study areas here were Quezon City, Cebu, Zamboanga, were refraining from visiting health facilities due to fear of exposure to COVID-19 or due to movement restrictions. So that uh, cut two ways. No? And uh, we surveyed uh, the with the SWS, the general population, and 41% were saying that the COVID pandemic uh, ha had, had effects in terms of uh, their access to services because of uh, there were too many processes, no available health workers, long queues, particularly the long queues were reported in NCR. As, uh, among the reasons why Filipinos were finding it difficult to access family planning services. No? So uh, we added up all the 41% from this uh, list of reasons why they were having difficulty to get family planning services or products. And uh, if you look at the geographic uh, location of these uh, women having difficulty in attaining or getting family planning services, a large number of them, 29%, were reporting this difficulty in Mindanao. Uh, and of course, the balance of Luzon outside Metro Manila, 18%, and Visayas, 14%. So these were the problems that they were saying, but uh, just note that in Metro Manila, 13% were saying there was a long queue. Uh, this is around November last year. And we can predict that with these new uh, lockdowns, with the current surges this year, the uh, same situations probably prevail. Now, uh, in pregnancy, when women were asked, uh, what is the most important problem of women today in November? 59% noted early teen pregnancy. And uh, related to pregnancy, 11% also uh, were worried about unexpected pregnancy. So, you can uh, see that together, 70% of women were concerned about pregnancy in one form or another. Another concern was physical, other concerns were physical violence, sexual violence, and emotional violence. So these uh, issues of pregnancy and violence were the, at the top of mind of women and men at the time uh, the survey was done in November. 
Now, what are the factors that are contributing to and uh, to this teen pregnancy? Again, a study made by Health Futures with uh, DOST and PCHRD showed that uh, currently uh, young women, uh, adolescents, look at the family as an institution that plays an important role in molding their behavior. But there are also those adolescents living in non-traditional families, solo parents, living with relatives, families in difficult circumstances, poor dysfunctional incidents of abuse and maltreatment, where they feel they are more vulnerable to early pregnancy. And gender and power dynamics were also cited by these uh, girls, that uh, gender norms, power relations, uh, play a significant role in sexual activity and teen pregnancy. And we have noted that from the, uh, uh, from the numbers of, uh, from the partners being reported in birth certificates of minors in this country. And uh, again, uh, this kind of relationship uh, leads to a, lack, a sense of a lack of power to refuse sexual favors exacerbated by a culture of silence which places the adolescent girl in greater difficulty. And this is during COVID. And uh, they also cited low knowledge on sexual reproductive health and rights and limited access to services as contributing to their situation where uh, sex or sexuality remains a taboo topic in most Philippine homes. One of the YAF surveys in 2000 showed that only 10% of parents roughly were willing to talk about sexuality or sex um, with their children. And uh, so 90% of households uh, probably are still uh, not talking about it uh, this time. Uh, and uh, the existing services for reproductive health, are uh, they feel are not designed with them in mind. Although I know DOH has been pushing itong adolescent-friendly health services. Now they feel that at this time, it's not yet uh, that open to them. Now, there is uh, also poor knowledge on contraceptives, no? and uh, formal or informal sources are not enough uh, for them to feel empowered, no? uh, to be able to avoid particularly repeat pregnancies. And uh, other consequences that they were citing, are early maturation and role shift. Adolescent mothers feel immense pressure to perform their role as mothers. They are juggling domestic world, workload and child rearing, and uh, they have difficulty coping with current responsibilities of being a wife and a mother at that age. Uh, these uh, adolescent mothers also felt uh, isolated socially um, being uh, the feeling of being stigmatized and frowned upon by the community, again, common to these teenagers, and embarrassment preventing them from visiting healthcare facilities uh, and uh, fear of gossip and criticism. And another consequence that they were reporting, early pregnancy is a compelling reason to stop schooling and some do not go back to school anymore. Again, being reported by DSWD in their four-piece program. Often they also become financially dependent on parents or the partner's parents. So there is this uh, lack of uh, you know, uh, empowerment among these uh, young mothers as they are <clears throat> um, financially you know, uh, strapped or uh, limited in their situation. So. What can we do about their situation, particularly in this time of COVID? And uh, technically speaking, government has several plans which cover sexual reproductive health of Filipino adolescents. They're included in the Philippine Development Plan, in the Philippine Youth Development Plan of NYC, and in the Philippine Population Development Program of the Commission on Population, which is usually included in the Philippine Development Plan. What we are trying to do with the Department of Health in particular is that in terms of service delivery, um, DOH is working very hard to set standards and to identify adolescent-friendly health facilities and really recognize them for the work they do. 
and they're working to enhance the capacities of healthcare providers and uh, support the establishment of teen centers to complement the services provided by public and private uh, facilities. On the demand generation side, which uh, Popcom usually works on, we're working with DepEd, which is a member of Popcom, to implement comprehensive sexuality education, both in and out of schools, particularly out of school when it comes to alternative learning systems. We would like to also mainstream uh, uh, information, education, communication, demand generation strategies addressed particularly to adolescents and parents no? as a key populations that we work with and continuing our policy advocacy, including the submission to the Office of the President of a draft executive order to address teen pregnancy in this country, something that we sent out a year ago, uh, more than a year ago in, Feb in February, uh, this was endorsed by Secretary Pernia, who was chair at the time of PAPCOM, later re-endorsed by Secretary Carl Chua when he assumed leadership of uh, NEDA and PAPCOM. We have uh, also set up helplines, uh, USAP ties of family planning on teen health and sexuality. And the helpline has been in place since May to July and there are and the queries coming up from adolescent inquire, include inquiries on pregnancy, checkup, um, implant insertion, how to use a pill and menstruation questions in general. We also have set up a program you now we call a Facebook uh, live program Usap Tai Sa Family Planning, uh, which has had 10 episodes since August, uh, so a year ago now. And we have uh, many different guests uh, like Chuck Dreyfus and his family, et cetera, talking about population and development and family planning. And we have, of course, online videos that we are posted from our previous uh, engagements with uh, schools where they produce uh, indigenous films for, on issues uh, that affect children. Also, uh, we go online at uh, different levels, national, regional, even at the provincial level with population offices talking to adolescents. And we feel that uh, that is not adequate. We need to add some more. And as I said, we uh, uh, submitted to the president an, a draft executive order, and it was uh, issued last June 25. And uh, uh, the title is to adopt a national as a national priority the implementation of measures to address the root causes of the rising number of teenage pregnancies and mobilizing government agencies for the purpose. And really uh, the ones who are asked to take the lead here are uh, to uh, get the youth and communities to be mobilized to address teen pregnancy. The National Youth Commission is asked to become a forum for this dialogue between government and youth and PAPCOM will work with the entire community to come up with a comprehensive action plan towards the prevention of adolescent pregnancy. And we are supposed to submit this plan to the Human Development Poverty Reduction Cluster headed by Secretary Bautista of the SWD in uh, a month's time. And then uh, this will initiate the implementation of activities related to the ex executive order. And our general plan uh, is based on this framework you know, uh, that are at the end what we want to see as a country are well-informed, empowered, healthy, responsible adolescents. And that will be achieved by helping them uh, attain improved health and nutrition, improved education, employment, and economic conditions, and increased youth participation in development. This is the ideal that we're aiming for. And the outcome that will help us achieve that, that we're working for, is to reduce the incidence of pregnancies among adolescents. And by this is particularly by reducing first and repeat pregnancies among adolescents. And that will take the following kind of uh, behaviors, no? uh, outcomes. No? 
delayed sexual activities. We should work on reducing incidence of unprotected sexual activities, reduce the incidence of sexual abuse, reduce other non-sexual risk behaviors that impact on pregnancy, increase utilization of sexual reproductive health services by adolescents, and increase participation in community develop development by adolescents in general. The strategies we will employ are both preventive and protective. One pillar will be a comprehensive sexuality education, which is already a, a mandate under the RPRH law. And with DepEd as the lead and the communities uh, also participating. Access to reproductive health services, which include family planning, maternal, newborn, uh, child, adolescent, health and nutrition services. So this will be um, uh, particularly led by local governments and civil society that are providing services to adolescents. We will also look at measures to uh, combat sexual abuse and coercion that we have mentioned, including um, uh, young, uh, among very young adolescents, pregnancies at 10 to 12 years old, uh, and as well as instances of abuse, uh, wherever we, we, it is reported, and uh, to uh, mobilize agencies like DOJ, um, Philippine Commission on Women, um, uh, Commission on Human Rights to work in this area. Socioeconomic development interventions will also be focused on the 166,000 um, minors who are leading families and uh, social protection program is being developed by Popcom and DSWD to address the services needed by those mothers who are already contending with their situation and, as well, and to provide support for their children as well. And uh, youth participation and development. In this area, we hope uh, National Youth Commission, the SKs nationwide take the lead uh, with the support of different government agencies, including PopCom, DOH, DEP, and, and other, the SWD. So um, there are cross-cutting issues uh, in terms of leadership and governance, particularly at local government. We need to develop good information uh, knowledge and manage that uh, uh, knowledge so that it's uh, uh, used by different agencies and to monitor and evaluate the program as it progresses on a year-to-year -year basis. And we need the support of all stakeholders uh, at community level in particular. Uh, among the early activities that we have conducted is that uh, November last year, we started a program with local government units to prevent adolescent pregnancies. No? And we call it the Challenge Initiative. And we started with three cities, Cagayan de Oro with Mayor Moreno, um, Dipolog City with Mayor Darrell Uy, and Puerto Princesa City with uh, uh, Mayor Byron uh, to focus on uh, establishing adolescent and youth-friendly cities. and. Uh, take the lead in reducing teenage pregnancies. We will be adding another 13 cities this year uh, so that we have one city in every region uh, participating in this initiative. And uh, uh, both DSWD and PopCom are working to develop a social protection program for teen mothers who are minors and their children, young 166,000, and we hope there will be funding for that in the coming General Appropriations Act in 2022. So these are initiatives that we hope people can add to, people can participate in. And uh, all for, the, for a better and empowered adolescent population in this country. Maraming salamat po. Magandang tanghalian po sa ating lahat. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Yusek uh, GP. Uh, very, very comprehensive presentation po. I learned a lot of uh, new numbers uh, as it relates to teen pregnancy, mga repeat teen pregnancies, uh, teen maternal mortality. 
Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. GP. Uh, we'll call on you again, sir, uh, during the panel discussion and hopefully you'll thank be you. able to join us. Uh, next up, we will have uh, the Chief of the Division of Adolescent Medicine in the Department of Pediatrics at uh, UPPGH. Uh, she is also the co-founder of the PGH Teen Mom Program uh, and also the president of the Philippine Society of Adolescent Medicine Specialists. Please welcome to the webinar, Dr. Emma Lianto. Dr. Lianto? Yes, thank you. Uh, may I share my slides? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead po. Do you see it, sir? Uh, yes po. Go ahead, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, again, thank you. Thank you for the invitation and thank you, uh, Dr. JP, for that such an extensive um, uh, presentation. Uh, I, I know some of the numbers, but uh, they still continue to upset me. So I hope that um, I hope that we will be able to do something about it, and this does not end as another just another webinar. So um, my presentation will be mostly focused on how we can respond to the different. Uh, different vulnerabilities and needs of our teen pregnant uh, girls, no? So um, just as a summary, uh, these are the unique uh, vulnerabilities of our young girls, uh, especially for those who are younger than uh, for, uh, 15 years old, the bodies are not well developed, so they're short. We also have a very high stunting rate among our adolescents, that's about 26%. So they're short, the pelvis are narrow, and small, so that's that's why they are more prone to obstructed labor. Uh, also, 37% are nutritionally at risk. You no, know? so they have anemia, they're underweight, and so they tend to have low birth weight babies. And when they have a repeat pregnancy, which happens in 15% of all our pregnancies, you set up an intergenerational cycle of malnutrition, and we know the impact of malnutrition not only in terms of physical uh, physical impact, but also on the mental and uh, IQs of our, of our children and adolescents and adults. No? So those are the things that are really important. The interval between births for uh, young girls is very short, 17 months. The advice right now is to have three years in between, in between pregnancies. So you see how... Uh, compromise there in terms of nutrition. Now, um, this was also emphasized by Dr. Uh, JP, but again, I would like to emphasize that coercion is in the picture, especially if you have very young girls. So automatic, if they're younger than 14, you have to ask about, um, you know, relationships and the age of the guy who got her pregnant because uh, the PSA statistics itself shows that 70%, like three, uh, two out of three infants born of teen moms are, were actually fathered by much older men. And um, also mentioned was ITV, that's intimate partner violence. We also need to screen for this because this is quite common. And it's no wonder that the postpartum depression can be high in this, uh, in this age group, no? in this particular segment of uh, adolescents. Uh, this is data from abroad, but I think we need to make our own studies here uh, in the Philippines. And what is uh, also difficult is that they have pre-pandemic access is always very late. So usually we get them when they're in the second trimester, sometimes in their third trimester, because of course they try to hide the pregnancy. So they try to hide it uh, because of the fear of uh, reprimands and stigma. And so, and they don't, they don't eat well so that the tummies don't become bigger. So really it sets them up for all these disadvantages. Now, this is, in the next few slides, I'll talk about our teen mom program, which we set up in 2000. Um, and this is basically, remember the levels of prevention are two. Primary level, which um, there's a lot of plans that Dr. JP mentioned, but that's preventing the first pregnancy. Our program in PGH actually, is more on preventing the subsequent pregnancy, no? Because they are prone to rapid repeat pregnancies. About 20 to 40% of them can have another pregnancy in the next two years. So this is um, 
This is actually uh, mainly a partnership between perinatology, OB, and uh, pediatrics and adolescent medicine. Uh, but you see that we involved a lot of um, a lot of the subspecialties and, and services in the hospital. So um, because you, the needs of a pregnant adolescent are multiple, no? So, so it's perinatology for the obstetric care, contraceptive services, very important, nutrition, and medical subspecialties like cardiology, because we do have a population of RHD patients or those with chronic kidney disease or SLE uh, lupus who get pregnant, no? And uh, we have been seeing also an increase in the number of those with multiple uh, congenital anomalies. So we call in genetics also for counseling and uh, other services. But what sets this program apart from any obstetric program for uh, uh, teen pregnancy, uh, teen, uh, for pregnancy is the psychosocial supports, no? which is mainly the work of adolescent medicine. Uh, we do the psychosocial assessment. We do the health education together with uh, OB. Uh, social workers play a very important role. Child protection also comes in because usually if we ask the age of the partner, if it's a gap of four, four or more years, we actually uh, do a, uh, a referral uh, to child protection. And if we detect there's uh, depression or uh, suicidal thoughts, we also have a referral to child and adolescent psychiatry. So it's an interprofessional uh, service. Now, the thing here is that the approach is also unique. We use the adolescent friendly approach, which is basically strengths-based, uh, non-judgmental, respectful, focus on the adolescent's confidentiality and supportive of emerging, uh, their emerging capacities. For instance, you see this picture, we interview, interview them alone, no? So that, that is respectful for confidentiality, privacy, and also the, this teaches them to deal with health workers on their own. Now, what is important is that we screen uh, for both the strengths and the risks. So we do the heads interview and we ask about uh, relationships at home, uh, education, have they dropped out, uh, their activities, much time on the internet, but where that they're, they're, they're meeting their partners, um, use of drugs, uh, which is uh, alcohol, tobacco, and other drugs, um, in, uh, you know, violence in the relationships, depression, and suicide. And uh, with this information, we are able to do counseling and uh, referrals to MSS, uh, Medical Social Services, and Child Protection Unit. And we also uh, engage the adolescent in uh, these major decisions, no? So decisions like, uh, Will you raise the child on your own with your family? Uh, do you involve your boyfriend or your partner? Uh, are you thinking about adoption? And if they do think about adoption, we also involve MSS, no? because there's a, there's a lot of preparations here. But most of our adolescents actually opt to raise the baby with their families. Um, stay with your parents or cohabit with the partner. We discourage cohabiting because that sets them up for another pregnancy and they are unable to go back to school. Um, resume or quit school. So it's so important to get them back to school. We tell them that there's no, they, the school does not have any right to kick them out. That's against the law. No? And we can contest that. And of course, we talk about um, decisions about having another baby. Um, is that something in their agenda? Would you like to prevent that? Would you, what are your thoughts here? And we give them options uh, about the use of contraceptives. And um, the emphasis here is really for them to understand uh, long-acting reversible contraceptives like Implanon and IUD. Give them the space. You know, they, they can prevent pregnancy for three years. That's enough time for them to finish school, to breastfeed, for their bodies to recover. So this is very important that they understand how important it is to prevent a rapid repeat pregnancy. Now, we also empower them with uh, information as well as skills. So we do health classes uh, that, cover this, uh, that cover these topics. And uh, we, we, this picture shows um, a class on infant care. We demonstrate, we ask them to do the actual diaper 
changing, etc. And also we emphasize breastfeeding because breastfeeding rates among adolescent women, uh, mothers are quite low. No, there's a lot of challenge, uh, challenges for them. So we really support them in terms of information and skills. Now, we also supplement the lessons with brochures. Uh, we uh, go through a birth plan because they have to plan uh, where they're going to give birth. Uh, you know, are they prepared with the money? Is the pill health ready? Uh, do they have the bag with the clothes, etc. And the provisions. Now, because remember, they can't plan as well as adults, and so we need to help them build the skills. No, in planning and decision making. Okay, so uh, in 2014, um, uh, in gender health, Visayas Health, uh, with USAID, USAID funding actually uh, set up uh, similar clinics. They called it a uh, program for young parents, no PYP. So this is less stigmatizing than a teen mom. And uh, by the end of 2018, they actually had 33 clinics across the Visayas. Um, I think there are two in Leyte, uh, IBRMC and uh, Abuyog. And there's a big one in Iloilo. So, uh, so this was uh, recognized by the UH and actually given an award by NEDA. So I, 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 I don't, although I don't know what's happened here, no, because uh, the funding ended, but we really are hoping that the hospital would really pick it up and DOH should pick it up no? and enable the other hospitals to have this program. So it can be replicated. Okay, so um, I'm almost done. Uh, just a few more slides. Now this is, um, Dr. JP mentioned uh, pro problems with access, but this is really data from the NCR um, households uh, by UNICEF, a survey done in December, 2020. And it shows that uh, fewer women were getting uh, pregnant women, women were get, receiving fewer antenatal uh, care checkups. So this is pre-COVID, dark blue, 99% were able to get four visits. Now in the COVID uh, times, pandemic, 61%. So if you don't go for checkups, you are less likely to take iron and folic acid tablets. Um, this is, this is uh, also a little bit alarming, especially for teen pregnancies, no? Women are less likely to give birth at hospitals where they need to be, no, for adolescents, and more likely to give birth at other health facilities. Although at this time, home births were had not increased. But remember, this is NCR data. We don't know what's happening in the provinces. Um, mentioned already was the access to sexual reproductive health services like FP, um, very low to start with now lower. And this is for all women, no? So it's much lower uh, for uh, young girls. And um, remember the restrictive laws and provisions of the RH law, RPRH, that you need consent uh, to be able to access contraceptive. So that's something also that we need to think about. Okay, so in our experience um, in PGH, we noted a very marked decrease in the number of teen pregnancies that we, uh, girls with teen pregnancies uh, seen in our teen mom clinic. So in 2019, we were able to serve 228 uh, young mothers, but in 2020, just 43 of them showed up. And this is understandable because we had to close and you know the services shifted uh, to COVID efforts. Uh, my fellows mentioned that they are starting to come in again, no? So this month we had, I think, nine referrals of instead of the usual two or three. Okay, so what happens is that they are admitted in the wards. Some of them, very few of them though, had, had, have had COVID. My fellows were able to uh, uh, see them uh, with precautions, of course. And they noted that the isolation is very, very tough for the young girls, no? And especially because they don't have gadgets. Uh, they don't have cell phones to, to keep in touch with their family. So, so it's very, very isolating. It's very difficult for these young girls who just gave birth and they, they're, they're in an isolation ward. Now, we also noted that there's an increase of sick babies left at the ICU. Of course, our, our statistics are skewed because we are a referral center. 
Uh, but uh, for instance, we saw six uh, mothers last month. Four of them had premature babies, and then we had one who had uh, congenital um, malformations. So that's just an observation. So no big data yet. No, it's just coming in. Now, what happened is that we sh shifted our, remember we have health classes, uh, we shifted to online. So it's a, uh, we also shifted our postpartum follow-ups online. Now, the thing is that it's very difficult to gather them. Number one, it's difficult to gather them. Uh, they don't have the gadgets. They don't have the connectivity. And even though we start the calls and if our fellows are giving them load, they don't show up. No, for instance, this is a screenshot. Um, the ones, these are the patients too, and then the rest are doctors. So in this particular call, six said they would go, but only two appeared. So you can see the, and there's a lot of effort that goes into setting up an online consultation. Now this is a, this is a postpartum visit uh, just to follow up on how the baby's doing, the breastfeeding, how she's feeling, etc. No, so we, we we try to do that. Although we see this as an opportunity also because we're able to follow them up. No, which was very difficult pre-pandemic because they would not come back to us. So those are the limitations also of the program. Now the challenges are. Uh, I think I mentioned it's the physical access to the services and, of course, access to online services because we've shifted. No? Okay, um, key points. Basically, just to summarize the unique vulnerabilities of our adolescents, um, it's both medical and psychosocial. Uh, we do have comprehensive at teen, existing uh, comprehensive teen pregnancy program, which is open for people, DOH to pick up. It has been picked up. Um, our, cha our challenges are obvious, no? Access to prenatal, contraceptive, contraceptive services, and online services. It's a big, big challenge. Although it is also an opportunity for them uh, to access our services and for us to reach them. So what can we do? Uh, Dr. JP has had a lot of, um, a lot of plans and, um, and uh, you know, it is very concrete. And I really say good luck and please, Let's, let's really move this forward, no? So for us, it's improving the connectivity, uh, both inpatient, if they're isolated, outpatient. Uh, of course, family planning services should really be strengthened also. Um, have the COVID vaccine available for our teen pregnants, no? When they're admitted in the hospital and other vaccines also should be available. Of course, uh, comprehensive sexuality education, um, you know, we should, we should uh, take care of the restrictive laws uh, of the RPRH. Remember, even though they are, they've already given birth, but they're below 18, they cannot give consent for contraception. That's really ridiculous, no? And of course, uh, expanding adolescent friendly services, uh, which the DOH has been really trying hard, but we need to try harder. Thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share my insights. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Lianto. Uh, we learned a lot about the Teen Mom Clinic, but I really like your last slide on expanding uh, adolescent-friendly services, ma'am. Uh, we hope you'll be able to stay on for our uh, panel discussion po later on. Thank you, po, Dr. Lianto. Uh, next up, we will have uh, another expert. Po. She is the former director of the UP Population Institute. Uh, please welcome to the webinar, Dr. Josefina Natividad. Dr. Joy. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you very much for the very informative slides, both from Doc GP and Doc Emma. Uh, I learned a lot, especially from Doc Emma. And uh, my reactions are really a reaction to Doc GP's uh, presentation. And it's coming from academia and not being a physician. This is really a, a reaction that is coming that will be about uh, the centered on three things, my reactions will be, one is uh, my uh, suggestions about how to further maybe enhance or rethink the data analysis, what analysis of available data on teen pregnancy and how to get more out of it in order to draw uh, lessons that can be used for better interventions. 
And then I will talk a little about what are the drivers of teen pregnancy uh, in the Philippines. And then in the, the third is a very short uh, section on um, the teen pregnancy in times of COVID-19. Mm. So for the data analysis issues, oh, okay, I, will, I, will, I wrote down my comments, so I'll just read them. I don't have slides. Uh, I think it is important to break down the prevalence rates of teen pregnancy by single age for purposes of better targeting of intervention policies and programs because there is a distinct age gradient in teen childbearing. By this, I mean that, for example, more than half of all teen pregnancies are actually accounted for by women aged 18 to 19. And uh, the risks, both health and non-health related, will be different for the older teens, 18 to 19, compared to the younger ones, those who are below 17 and below. The same goes for access to services because the 18 to 19 year olds are already adults. So for a better targeting, it may be better to frame the issue of teen pregnancy not as a lump of 15 to 19 year olds or, or 10 to 19 years old, but maybe alternative to, alternatively to break it up into early pregnancy, meaning pregnancy below 18, and then uh, 18 to 19 year old. So you have young adolescents and or young teens and older teens. And in that way, we, we can gain a better picture of who is really at risk because I, I think that much of the attention should be focused on the 17 and below. Okay. Apart from age disaggregation of teen pregnancy prevalence, I also suggest analysis of the school living status of teens who get pregnant. The popular notion is that a girl gets pregnant while in school and has to stop schooling, implying that leaving school is the consequence of the pregnancy. This is quite contrary to what has been found from the uh, young adult fertility and sexuality study 2013 data set, which uh, Dr. G. GP also quoted, and this is one thesis from a student of mine, the last one I advised before I retired. Uh, in the thesis, she, uh, Maniego, she reported that among 20 to 24 year olds in the, who got pregnant in their teens and were also school dropouts, that is they left school without completing a high school education, 95% had already dropped out of school before the pregnancy. 4% uh, had the dropping out and pregnancy happening at about the same time. And 1% reported that the pregnancy happened to or prior to their dropping out. The mean age of dropping out was 14 years, while the mean age at birth of the first child was 18 years for this uh, cohort. So as Maniego concluded, with what, within this age group of teen moms who are also school dropouts, Almost all had already left school before they bore their first child. This indicates that for most of these women, majority are from who, of whom are from poor households, early childbearing did not cause them to drop out of school, but leaving school early may have left them with fewer life options, one of which was evidently to find a partner and a start a family early. Okay, what this finding implies is that school-based interventions for teen pregnancy prevention may have to start at earlier grades to catch those who drop out really early before they finish junior high school. It further implies that there should probably be an entirely different uh, set of programs designed to address school dropouts. I think uh, Dr. GP already pointed this out, but that this can be this could be fleshed out more that you should that there should be a hmm, special program for those who have dropped out of school and that these programs will not just provide training and opportunities for better human capital formation or persuade them to go back to school but really about pregnancy prevention as well so which brings us to a third point to consider in the disaggregation of the data and that is May I suggest that since most teenage pregnancies happen in the lowest socioeconomic brackets, that is if we divide the population into quintiles ranked from lowest to poorest, most teen pregnancies 
occur in the two lowest quintiles, the lowest 40% of the population in terms of socioeconomic status. So these are teen moms who are unlikely to access the services of private practitioners or may even be hesitant to access the public facilities. I think PGH is doing a very good job of addressing this cohort of young women. And maybe this is a program that can be uh, adopted in other public hospitals as well to really cater to the needs of teen pregnant, of teen women who are in the lower socioeconomic status because they may be prone to stigmatizing if they go to the public facilities where everyone else goes. And then they will be mocked or talked about so things like that. So maybe there's a special program that can give them better attention. Okay, so next are what are the drivers of teen pregnancy? Uh, Okay, as Dr. M pointed out, adolescence is really a special time for, for uh, growing up. And in general, it is developmentally, adolescence is characterized in terms of behavior by high risk taking and generally poor judgment by adult, by adult standards. And that is really just the nature of the adolescent brain. So, <clears throat> Sexual activity is one example of this <clears throat> high risk taking that adolescents uh, take. And the drivers to teen pregnancy at this time, we can look at, for example, number one, this came from the YAPS 2013, but likely will also be more magnified. We are now in the preparation for the next round of YAPS. We are going to go on field within 2021. And this is an area that is explo explored much more detail. And that one driver of green pregnancy that we found in 2013 and likely to be higher now is the higher prevalence of sexual activity due or driven in part by the early exposure to sexual content through various sources that are more readily available with the internet. And the ease with which the internet can be accessed, especially now through the mobile phone. So sexual activity among teens are enabled by these new technologies. They can meet up, they can take videos of themselves, they can exchange sex videos. And so it's this whole uh, world of the young, sexual world of the young adolescents that is now one of the drivers for a higher teen pregnancy. There's also the changing norms about sexual behavior. I mean, admittedly, sex outside of marriage is no longer as taboo as it used to be. And it is normally depicted in everywhere, in media, in uh, your teleseria, and all of these other uh, mm, popular media forms that, you know, it's not so, it's not so different. I mean, having sex without being married is not as the as tabooed as it used to be. And so if you have sex and you're unprotected, you're more likely to get pregnant. Probably also another driver is the earlier age at Menard compared to maybe two or three generations ago. So when women get uh, are able to conceive much earlier now then, and there's sexual activity, then there's a higher risk of uh, getting pregnant. Also, there are changes to the social acceptability or tolerance for teen pregnancy. It has, I mean, compared to my generation, certainly it is no longer as stigmatized. And more importantly, there is no more compulsion to get the teen formally married when, they, when a teenager gets pregnant. Although we were uh, talking about it during the pre-preparations uh, for this webinar, there's really a rise in uh, cohabitation. And that is not just among young people, but among all age groups in the Philippines. The number of formal marriages are decreasing, but there are more people who are living together in a, a marital union that is not uh, formal. Okay, so more acceptable ang sexual behavior, and then it's not so, uh, teen pregnancy is no longer at such a horrible uh, experience, at least you to be socially at least. And all of this exacerbated by the lack of appropriate knowledge among, I mean, this has already been pointed out, and the lack of enabling behaviors to prevent 
the pregnancy, like the use access to the use of contraception, for example, a condom. I mean, as simple as a condom. The lack of also of an enabling mindset. I mean, a mind uh, um, a mindset that when I engage in sex, pregnancy is likely to happen, and therefore I should do this thing so that I will not get pregnant. It's not. I mean, the, there is not that kind of a mindset in our adolescents yet. There, and maybe a, a lot of this is also attributed to the fact that there is a lack of male involvement in the teen pregnancy issue, the potential fathers, the lack of the sense of responsibility that they are just as responsible for bringing a child into this world as a woman. So the, what happens is that uh, teens uh, get have the sexual activity and then they get pregnant and when the woman gets pregnant, it is now her problem. It's not the boy is off the hook. So all of these are, uh, when you put all of these together, then you have a higher, that you have the drivers for a higher teen pregnancy. Okay. And so what is the effect of the pandemic on the prevalence of teen pregnancy? We do not yet have the data to ascertain if the prevalence of teen pregnancy increased or decreased since March 2020. But according to the PSA, I think there is some data, I just did not look at the disaggregation by age, sorry. The number of registered births in 2020 actually sharply decreased compared to 2019 from 1,673,923 births in 2019 to 1,403,336 births in 2020. So births have pretty much declined in general. Although, of course, there can be issues about uh, low registration because of lack of access. But even then, even if we discount that possibility, I think there is a real decline in the number of births in 2020. So my personal projection is that teen childbearing among those who are never married may have decreased mainly because of the limited mobility of the population, the closure of schools, and many people staying home. So for the same reason that they cannot access services, there is also a decrease in the interaction among potential partners because we are all locked down. So maybe we can see a decrease in overall first-time pregnancies among teens who are not in a marital union. But among teens who are in a marital union, and by marital union, I mean both uh, formal and cohabiting, there, are, there is a higher likelihood of repeat pregnancy, as already been pointed out, if there is interruption in the prov provision of family planning services in general. So in all, there may be a decrease in first pregnancies among teens during the pandemic, but an increase in repeat pregnancy among teens who are married either formally or informally. Thank you very much. That's, that's my reaction. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. That's uh, Dr. Joy Natividad, formerly of the UP Population Institute. And um, for, for those insights, I think uh, more penetrating, more penetrating analysis of what's actually going on. Okay, our next speaker is one of your favorites. And I'm sure maraming babati sa chat. Uh, she's been with us before, and again, uh, this time, you know, kami naman magkasama ni Ophel in the time of uh, time of Secretary Alberto Romualdez, who also pushed for family planning. And um, she's been in reproductive health for the longest time, but she's now uh, Mayor Yorma, Mayor of Tolosa, late Dr. Ophel Alcantara, uh, who actually we want to hear from you, Ophel, on the ground in the community in a rural area like uh, Tolosa Leyte, marami bang teenage pregnancy dyan, ano bang nangyayari? So welcome, uh, Dr. Ophel Alcantara. Yorma. Mayor Ophel. Parang uh, frozen eh. Opo, Ophel. I think she's trying to open her, screen, her video, pero... Oo. Ophel? I think it's her internet po, Dr. Susie. Internet? Mm -mm. It might be her internet connection. Okay, let's see. 
Yun. Ay, Yun, okay. And, okay. Oh, Yorma. How are you, Yorma? Kinabahan ako. Pag sabi mong Yorma, biglang nag-cut ang connectivity ko. My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> of course, uh, thank you, Sosi and Dr. Raymond. I'm happy to be back. Napaka-importante din ito uh, sa akin as mayor at as a person. Ano, itong topic na ito kasi uh, matagal na natin ito bago pa mag-health sector uh, Uh, health sector reform agenda in 2019 pinag-uusapan na natin itong family planning kasama itong uh, reproductive health so damo nga salamat mga upay nga udto kulop uh, mga namamati at mag, uh, magandang hapon sa ating lahat let me share my slide okay uh, ako si ako yung mayor ngayon ng Tolosa Asa na ito. Okay. And Okay. And Nakikita? Okay. Yeah, okay, uh, okay. Okay, thank you. Gusto ko ipaalam na nag-aral ako ng medisina matagal, 'di ba? Uh, so may boyfriend, pwede mag-boyfriend. Pero nag nag uh, nag anak ako 31 years old. Uh, so Uh, hindi ako 10 age pregnancy. Siguro noon ang, ang family, yung family support, yung values, uh, isang bagay na nakatulong which actually as presented ni Dr. JP at sa kanila Doc Emma and Doc Josie na may effect ang lalo na ang environment where our adolescents are. So I will make uh, as a panel reactor, I will look at anong yung present ni Doc JP And also, uh, na, na, nadagdagan ako yung learning from Doc Emma, uh, which definitely I will also adapt the 10 moms in the locality in, in Tolosa. And also the, the sharing ni Doc Josie na, na ito yung realities and ano yung kailangan natin, especially on the data that will move forward our policy at saka program. Ngayon, yung, with this uh, presentation, and really thank you, stop that, uh, stop COVID death uh, webinars kasi kami din sa local government kami used to be a program de develop ng program and as a person na dadagdagan ng aming continuous learning so every Friday we look forward to this uh, webinar se series and for today I'm here to be your panel and if you look at yung presentation highlight and observation ng Doc JP at status of children and its effect problema talaga very alarming matagal nang wake up call but still it happened yung factors continue to persist and more so hindi pinag-uusapan at maraming effect ngayon kagaya ng social media and the pandemic has really uh, affected itong atin teenage pregnancy especially sa bahay lang sila and ang mas ang minsan ang uh, Um, itong third bullet ko on poverty and security na I, uh, when I went around the barangays and pick up bakit nabuntis itong 13 years old uh, kariregla lang and then nabuntis agad uh, una ang sinasabi ng family parang kasi poverty kadagdagan na konti ang pagkain so dinidivide-divide sa pamiling malaki So, mas maganda mag-asawa ka na para mawala ka na sa amin. That's really, ano, and then, ano then is a security issue. Parang yung bata, nakaka-feel secured, lalo na kung uh, ang kanyang aasawahin or magiging partner relationship is older, pwede niyang patuloy suportaran at pati yung pamilya. Ang, ang meron naman kami na young, ang young then ang nakabuntis kasi itong mga nag-aaral, naglalaro pa lang, nagpibiroan, then all of a sudden nawawala sa picture, nag, na, na, nagsisex na pala at yun ang nangyayari na bubuntis. Pero most of our children or itong mga teenage na nabuntis na na-interview ko ay iniwan talaga. Hindi sila uh, pinakasalan uh, or Uh, ano ito, uh, hindi in, uh, ano ito, yung um, pagsama o suportahan yung pagbubuntis. So sino nag-aalaga? Yung nanay, may, ay mayroon din kaming history dito na 
uh, most of this ten age pregnancy happen not just si poverty, malaki ang pamilya. But mayroon ding history na early pregnant na, na early pregnant yung nanay. So parang naging kultura sa sa kanilang pamilya na magan okay lang pala mabuntis ng mas maaga. So may medyo very alarming din yan uh, uh, to me as a uh, babae at saka head ng family at the same time uh, aarugaan yung aking community na mas mapaganda at mapaunlad yung ating bayan. And now with that in with this information na shared ni Doc JP at saka ngayon nadagdag pa ako from my panel uh, reactors co panel reactors anong gagawin ko as a chief executive at also isang uh, family planning advocate uh, na uh, pwede natin magawa ano yung service package na pwede natin diretso ibigay sa 10H pregnant or ma-prevent itong pregnancy. At saka ano naman yung sistema para mapabilis, mapadali, maibigay yung services, yung information, uh, lalo na ngayong pandemic na hindi na pwede tayo mag-dialogue. No? At saka ano yung performance tracking? Ano yung i-check nating top 10 indicators sa ating programa para ma mabigyan natin ng atensyon itong mga 10 age na nagpre-pregnancy at saka yung adolescent or youth program itself okay and i would announce sa uh, doc jp yung important discussion uh, national at kami sa local government ma involve itong increasing pregnancy sa ages 10 to uh, 14 as I mentioned, itong 13 years old na karirregla na buntis. No? Ibig sabihin, 12 na regla din na buntis. Sabi ko, paano, anong mangyayari? Hindi nga niya maintindihan kung bakit may baby siya eh, na siya mismo yung ana anatomy niya at ano, basta nabuntis ako. So hindi niya ma-explain or sa sarili niya, anong gagawin ko? Uh, na, no? So we really have to have this discussion. And also, itong mga... Uh, ano natin na uh, papag-asawahin uh, para kasi nabuntis no yung ating ano na pagbuntis pinag-uusapan but the likelihood na mas repeat ang pregnancy meron kami nito uh, wala pang one year pag pinagsama itong young ones very fertile nabubuntis agad wala pang hindi pa nag one year after yung last delivery buntis so yung space niya para mabuntis which is already risky bata na siya magbaanak pa wala sa tamang space hindi pa ano ang kanyang uh, anatomy yung kanyang matres so magiging problema and i think we need also to discuss further itong violence against women especially ngayon marami ang solo parent uh, syempre uh, marami din wala yung parent lalo na yung nanay na sa labas o nagtatrabaho sa ibang lugar at naiiwan sa father. So meron tayong mga uh, itong incest that, ha that also happened and perpetrator mismo mga within the family. So kailangan yan, very ano ako dyan kasi hindi, uh, kasali ako lagi sa vow, uh, hindi pa ako nag-aasawa, dinidiscuss na ito at puntahan na ako nito. And of course, yung last is ano yung programa na pwede namin magawa kasi as presented ni Doc JP, Doc JP, ang ganda ng latag ng programa, but sa akin ay paano natin ma-operate, ma-customize sa local. Uh, especially kami, uh, parang sinasabi ko yung aking uh, adolescent, babantayan namin. So paano yung approach? Kasi we need also to look at the entire population at saka yung other programs. Uh, current realities, family values, but if you look at ngayon itong mga kabataan, hindi na nga sumasali sa pagro-rosary o pagsisimba uh, or ano yung values na meron o kultura sa pamilya kasi busy sa cellphone, sa gadgets or uh, nasa bahay nga pero hindi nag interact ang family about ano, discussing uh, hindi issue but paano maging progreso ang family. Yung nourishing environment, malaki din. Uh, sabi ko nga, pamilya yung una, then peers paglabas ng itong mga kapwa youth and then the community where they are. Ito yung crucial na ano natin uh, uh, tingnan and then the social media effect. Wala na. Uh, conserve ito. Ano ha, sabi nga natin, napaka-religious dito sa amin din, napaka-religious. Pero itong young ones, uh, ginawa nilang sex ang lugar, yung likod ng groto. Uh, mayroon kaming bukid na dasalan. 
minsan nakikita pa pero parang wala lang happy pa. So these are the values na tingnan natin at ano yung knowledge practice ng kabataan ngayon. Mas malalim, sabi ng Dr. J- J- Josie, mas malalim na na pag-analyze o anong data ang kukunin natin para mas matumbok natin kung ano ang uh, intervention na gagawin natin among the youth. Uh, sa local government, because of the pandemic, budget shift. Almost all, 90% of our budget nakapokus sa COVID. Kasi yun, ano, sabi ko nga, kung hindi na kayong magpa-COVID, mag-minimum health standard tayo, di, meron pa tayong budget to continue education, continue local economic development. And the provider so yung tao hindi lang yung health even yung aming MDR yung aming other sectors sa local government at partners naka-focus pagbigay ng services sa covid kasi hindi lang to about treatment but also about informing the public and also pakainin yung uh, naka-quarantine at uh, among others and ngayon dahil pandemic nga less na yung face to face so hindi na napapag-usapan with the youth Uh, ang mga dap- mga talakayan na dapat pinag-uusapan parang naging uh, bahala may mga konting discussions pero wala nang in-depth na ano so uh, and then ang mention ko about poverty and security challenging and difficult times and compounded mental health ang dami namin uh, mga young ones na nagkakaroon talaga ng mental health and wala silang matanungan ng tabang informasyon especially about their bodies uh, so modular no uh, ang class so walang interaction para tingnan ano nangyaring changes sa ating katawan itong mga young ones ano? and ang uh, re, ang isang current realities that's an opportunity mayroong project project ang dole mga junior interns ito na ako uh, Hinubog ko bago mag-start sila to work in the local government. We start with body, mind, and spirit. Dito ang uh, para values at saka nakahubog ng aking first agenda. Nabalik tayo sa deep-rootedness, domesticated, mapagmahal sa sarili, sa pamilya, at sa bayan. Hindi ka magkakamali no? para if we, ano itong uh, value inculcation. Then next is the for peace. Alam mo ang four piece is not a welfare or poverty ano uh, ano ito, welfare program. To me it's more of an education program. Pag may nakatapos diyan sa pamilyang mahirap, siguradong aangat at maaahon sa kahirapan kasi makakapagtrabaho itong nakatapos pag-aaral. But ano ang reality as presented ngayon? Hindi drop out ang laki ng drop out sa MCCT, may may uh, meron na silang incentive para maging part itong program at makatapos but yet nadadrop out kasi nabubuntis Ma- malakarang nandun na yung oportunidad na wala pa no? at then ako naman dito sa local ang ginawa ko itong mga programa uh, kinonsolidate ko ito ginawa namin munisipyo sa barangay so yung service itong program ginawa namin services together with the barangay council or officials para mapadala yung services sa barangay. Ginagawa namin ito regularly and yesterday nga yung aming isang culmination napakaganda kasi mga youth ang empowered. Sila nagturo sa amin ng council ng barangay at munisipyo at saka department heads na nandito kami and sila mismo sabi nila aalagaan namin mag start kami sa limang barangay at pati yung youth na involved na sa development at ang isa nila din tinatalakay na hindi mabuntis uh, at i-delay ang pag pwede mag-boyfriend pero walang ano uh, yung sexuality can be ano uh, pag-usapan para maging responsible okay so yun yung isang mga current realities natin okay and uh, So with this information, um, uh, ako been working with family planning and 10H um, youth and development bago pa no, in the 80, 80s pa. Pero uh, ang importante ay ano ang gagawin natin sa mga bagong informasyon. Ako ay look forward to this uh, weekly webinar kasi nadadagdagan yung aking continuous learning to improve further my personal mastery for myself, for my family, community and bilang mayor. So right now, crucial sa akin yung learning. Paano when I ask our MHO, bakit ganito yung programa natin? 
kailangan palawakin na. So ngayon, meron tayong mga data at information as presented ni Doc JP para sa ating local policy development. Na ako, ang 10-H pregnancy, bigyan ng focus at nakakontek siya sa maternal nutrition, child um, health and nutrition program. Hindi siya hiwalay. No? But focus tayo dito sa young ones na para ma-prevent yung pregnancy o ma ma early uh, ma late ang pagiging pregnant and then part of the responsible parenthood program and universal health care and eventually yung aking ambition do uh, local translation or customization ng ating ambition 2040 program ng government second ay yung youth as part of our economic development and human development and then yung third i think yun yung maganda yung learning sa PGH sa teen moms itong sharing ni Doc uh, Josie and of course itong programa ng Popcom with uh, different agencies that uh, sits in the Popcom uh, ay um uh, pababain sa amin no as as ganun naman ang gagawin namin sa munisipyo pababain pa natin para mas makarating tayo sa ating mga constituents na naghuhubog ng ating mga teenagers at mga youth no and i further enhance ako i-review ko agad itong actually ni-review ko nga nung sinabi yan uh, when i look at the program na Binigay kong directions, where are we now? So this information could further enhance at ma, ng aming strategic direction at program on teenage pregnancy. And third is, uh, may mga partners na pwede natin, as presented kanina, yung POGS. Ako yung classmate ko na POG member. Palagi akong call a friend telehealth kasi iba ang needs ng teenager. Eh. So if we can uh, institutionalize this coordinating mechanism na mapababa sa amin sa munisipyo, uh, una, of course, uh, pamilya to barangay to munisipyo, at ganun din naman ang support ng sa munisipyo from the province at national agency, no? uh, especially with PAPCOM and uh, National Youth Commission and the other agencies, especially like DOH, this WD, DOLI, TESDA, DepEd, CHED, among others, and of course, the other private sector. Ang tinitingnan ko, ang dami palang ideas na, na, ano, na mayor na ako, two, two years mayor. No? Marami nang mga nangyayari sa national na hindi ako na-involved kasi nandito ako sa local kasi ini-implement ko sa local. Na nakita ko, ang daming iniisip, yung thinkers natin sa mga NGAs, private sector, ang daming magaganda. Ngayon ang akin is how do we connect the national programs, maybe PAPCOM to work with DILG in an integrated framework to localize action. Para klaro ito ang ano, nakakabit-kabit siya, nakaholistic sistema para pag-implement namin dito, i-customize na lang namin at lo-localize. And one isang opportunity na papainhan sa atin ng program, may budget for youth, may budget for God. So there is a a budget or a resource that we could use to fund uh, intervention that is direct to 10-age pregnancy, prevention of 10-age pregnancy, or pag na-pregnant, ano ang programang meron tayo. And ang kabataan is part of the policy-making body na sa munisipyo may sanggunian kabataan na nakaupo at sa lahat ng barangay council. Napakaganda mga youth na gagawa ng batas para sa kanila at isa nga nito is how to prevent a uh, 10-age pregnancy. And ito, uh, very quickly, uh, ginama ko yung 2014 kasi Yolanda area kami. A reality after a pandemic, naraming nabubuntis. Maraming nabuntis, 2014, 2013 yung Yolanda. And then when I, sabi ko, tingnan natin yung five-year data, uh, na-reduce siya, no? But uh, ito na namang pandemic, nag start to increase. And ganun pa rin yung picture. Yung mas rural na barangay, doon mas maraming 10-age pregnancy. Yung poblasyon, zero na nga siya. Eh. At ang malapit sa poblasyon, I, I think it's more ang mga bata ay nakaka-interact pa rin and they can uh, nakaka-access ng mga information kasi mas malapit. Baka yun ang theory ko. But, uh, kasi yung father barangay, bakit, baka ito din yung Uh, mga development na kailangan din natin in place. No? Okay. Uh, so anong pangarap natin? Ano ang gusto natin mangyari? Ako with this as a mayor is a youth and development programs. Ako, I think let's go back to 
values, uh, ang ating culture na family as a unit of the society, a nourishing environment, patapusin pag edukasyon at health na uh, anatomy ang nag-uumpisa but also look at body, mind and spirit at psychological preparedness sa uh, ating mga youth para kasabi sila, hindi pa ako handa dyan kaya hindi ako pwede magbuntis. And then itong welfare program, uh, gawin nating karot na patapusin mag-aral para hindi mabuntis at makatulong umahon sa kahirapan. At itong sinasabi ko na uh, maging uh, dahil kahirapan mag-asawa ka na or uh, baka potential na baw itong bata kung older ang maging partner but ang reality kung young naman iniiwanan naman talaga no? so at baka masundan pa kung ituloy ang pagsama ng mga yan so we need to look at a holistic framework for youth development then second yung family ma empowered uh, ito na nga yung mga nandiyan sa teen moms nandiyan sa okay na Dok JP, paano natin gagawin sa komunidad at sa families makakaabot, uh, especially ngayong pandemic? But there's an opportunity, e-government na or digital, nakakarating na tayo lahat halos dito 85% may cellphone. So pwede gamitin natin as mas magandang uh, paggamit itong mga technology at hand. No? And of course, itong community mobilization, kagaya yung sinabi ko, itong ginawa namin ng munisipyo sa barangay, na ang youth mismo ang naging maingay sa pag pagpunta namin at uh, sila ang nag-lead uh, kasama yung kanilang uh, council no at uh, of course uh, patuloy na stakeholders uh, partners special sa community at ito nga mga learnings coming from the NGO mga models na ginawa ng development partner uh, mabuo natin to and third is a community support group for the peers hindi yan sila pupunta sa RHU para magpagamot o magtanong kasi una pagagalitan agad ay nagbuntis ka bala ka parang ganun no it's so it's a reality they don't come right away ang una nilang pupuntahan yung kapwa nilang peer youth na hindi rin alam and that's why we need to look at itong peer support uh, teams so doc JP itong ating teen centers na mas mapalawak maraming ano ito with UNPA mga nangyaring magandang best practices that we can do sa local. And itong call a friend uh, dahil nga ngayon ay pandemic magamit natin. And ang last is involve natin ang youth sa development program. Youth in Congress, youth in tourism, youth as advocates for COVID na ma-prevent, magpabakuna, minimum public health standards and also in local economic development. Okay, so ito yung inaano ko with National Youth Commission, ito yung ina-advocate nila with PAPCOM na paano ito din ma-implement na holistic dito sa amin. Either directly to the teenager or to the youth, then directly to the teenage pregnant um, woman or child and also them uh, uh, participating in development and progress. Ito ang programa ay may mga dinagdag ako kasi ito yung inano ko sa akin MHO and then during the local health board uh, magkaroon tayo as part of universal health care ng adolescent youth program nandiyan yung services to include health education welfare and protection uh, yung ano yung dapat na mayroon sila information bakuna individual at saka yung health education especially population na uh, services and ipasok din yung mental health kasi ito ngayon ang malaking programa and a tailored fit 10 age pregnancy services. Uh, maglagay tayo ng um, a private sector, baka lying in a private sector which the youth uh, can go kasi mas why, kumbaga ano, nakafocus kasi private, hindi masyadong marami ang tatrabaho kampara sa RHU. But at nakakabigay kasi private nga at saka sila ang ano, kung, uh, nagdi-discuss lang, walang masyadong maraming clients. So nabibigyan ng focus. And uh, teen centers, referral centers, yung minimension kanina ni Dr. Emma, uh, yung Visaya Health USA nag-implement, uh, we discussed din ito sa PHO. Lahat inadapt sa lahat ng district hospital in Leyte. Pero ang tanong na sustain ba? And that's the one 
na pwede natin balikan. Kasi kami sa Rural Health Unit with the lying in ng private uh, provider ay yung next referral namin ng special care ay itong teen center na bu bu buo ang pag buntis na titingnan siya hindi lamang prenatal but the others as mentioned din ni Dr. Emma. And uh, part of the reproductive health the 10 components is palawakin yung male involvement kasi sila ang sila ang nakakabuntis they are part mas magkasama ang babae at lalaki pero you know kung makakasabi sila sa babae na hey hindi pwede kasi ngayon ang, sa ami sa aking random tanong babae ang mas sexually active at saka nangangalabit uh, sorry sa term ha yung nag nag ano nag nag ano to nag stimulate ng ano ng uh, a relationship with a male partner kaya kung ma-empowered natin ang kababaihan itong mga kabataan ganun din yung male involved natin sa let empower na okay ang relationship but uh, alam mo mabubuntis ka kung wala kang family planning or wala kang uh, a uh, responsible uh, na pananaw no so kailangan natin ma-involve na and of course the policies and system a uh, data napakaimportante as mentioned ni Doc Josie yung further profiling of this uh, uh, mga kabab uh, ano uh, uh, mga kabataan and also to kababaihan and uh, the digital approach of informing and getting information and Second is the IEC health promotion and capacity building. And the um, third bullet ko is coordination mechanism at the community at uh, outside Tolosa. Uh, maybe we can institutionalize the program ng POGS at PPS dito sa province para masama sa amin healthcare providers networks and NGOs and other CSOs that could help us uh, para mabigyan ng uh, importansya itong 10 age pregnancy and of course resource mobilization, especially financing. Uh, tingnan natin may LGU financing, we can also look at field health financing as a, a major source of uh, financing. And, and as I mentioned kanina, a very important sensitive indicators for our performance tracking uh, nitong ating from the 10 age pregnant ano yung top 10 na dapat ko tingnan sa iyo ano din naman ang top 10 na titingnan ng service provider nitong 10 age pregnant and ano din naman ang top 10 na gagawin ng managers at local government para ma-empower itong mga youth may involve sa development at mabigyan services directly itong ating mga 10 age pregnant and last is of course our continuing organizational at uh, institutional capacity municipio at barangay for of course for leadership and governance kasi ito lang ang pangarap ko ambition doc a deep rooted and domesticated tulosanos balik tayo organize and orderly tulosa makakatulong itong mga youth uh, sa pag uh, unlad at pag organisa ng ating anong pwede nating maga magawa for our youth. And last is, the convenient, comprehensive, convenient, tailored fit, especially for them, convenient services for Tulosan, especially for this 10 age pregnant. And together, may mga executive orders, memorandum, may mga policies sa national work up, up JP with DILG and NYC. Kasi DILG ang, ang aming... Ano eh, ang aming sekretary, siya ang aming uh, uh, mga mayors. No? Uh, of course, yung DOH. And to look at technical and also developing partners among others. To provide technical assistance and technical uh, information as well as kami. Ang ano, itong administrative authority that we have, we are mandated. Itong mga informasyon magawa namin para itong... Uh, magawa itong facility. So moving forward, uh, Doc Josie is of course uh, Popcom help us uh, inhabitants and migrant survey may pe pe para magamit namin pag analyze no kasi kailangan natin yan for policy at sa ka program enhancement. Uh, Nag-start ako mag skills and talent mapping itong mga youth uh, kasi part of our munisipyo sa barangay services is also to map them para kung sino ang pwede kong malagay sa uh, junior uh, junior intern program, ma-match din sila yung skills nila to a productive uh, 
ano ito, like kahapon nakita ko, ang ganda sa theater and arts, itong mga bata na isang barangay yan, wala silang tourism, pero sabi ko, kayo mismo ang tourism. At makakatulong pag-ahon ng barangay at saka ng ating mga pamilya. Uh, and then, uh, with the ICT then uh, meron kaming local ano, livelihood program, digital online. So itong mga bata, ina tinuturuan, inaayos yung CV nila at skills. So international, national at local, hire na sila. May dalawang course na ako. And then, hindi pa yan, online business. May mga produkto kami, lalo na ngayon, mahirap ang marketing, nago online business sila. Okay, and uh, yung policy and Parliament Congress, as I mentioned, SK sa munisipyo, sa council at sa kabarangay council. Now, i-discuss itong mga kabataan, yung paano yung care of pregnant teenagers or youth development para nga ma-prevent yung pregnancy. Uh, may funds yan sila, say, let's... Uh, Uh, lagyan natin, bigyan ng mga information itong mga kabataan para mahabuo din nila ang sila mismo, youth uh, to youth ang paggawa ng programa. Mga tailored fit kasi sila mismo. Okay? And uh, direct services from the teen centers. May sports clinic ako before before COVID but uh, ngayon medyo hindi pwede ang ball games uh, but uh, this could be also an opportunity para ma-engage into something good itong ating mga mga youth and of course their services and last is a continuing collaboration and organizational capacity ng local government municipio at barangay at saka ito nga ang council sa youth no and again a sensitive indicators gamitin natin pag analyze quarterly uh, annually semi annually para mas lalong maparating natin yung programa and last but not the least the youth ito yung principle of leadership and governance na kagaya nito ako nga matanda na ay palaging thirst for knowledge the continuous learning to improve our personal mastery and ito ang maiwan natin sa mga youth ang wisdom na natutunan natin. So, continuous mastery. And then, paano nila isisystematize at gagamitin yung information, itong bago nilang learnings. At tayo naman, a shared vision sa kanilang mga youth at tayo naman, mga wisdom group na mga senior na ay makatulong in that shared visioning para team, continuous ang ating team learning at saka systemic organization of this program. Sa akin ay, konting kaalaman, malaking kaalaman gamitin for action at eventually maging habit and huwag tayo mag-stop mag maging part ito or character ng ating mga youth na know kung kailangan mag-know uh, it's a continuing or uh, yes to development, yes to congress, sa local to, to participate in the discussion organize tayo no? and this is a lifelong process of continuous learning. So with this I uh, So with slide with popcorn thank you jp uh, hopefully nyc doh will help and other engines stop covid deaths webinar session on Tulosa, i say alika na prevent teenage pregnancy mag youth in development in the next normal magandang umhapon at thank you very much thank you very much that's dr uh Ofel alcantara mayor of Uh, Tulosa Leyte, baka dapat governor na o kaya president. <laughs> president Alcantara. Napakayaman, ano, napakayaman ng kanyang uh, presentation at uh, napakalinaw ng mga kailangan gawin no, in terms of yung comprehensive development. No? So parang, oh, parang ang takeaway ko dun sa mga sinabi niya eh, yung teenage pregnancy parang si Thomas yan eh. Hindi yun ang problema. No? It's a symptom of something else. Okay, we're going to ask all our panelists to open their uh, their videos right now. And while they're doing that, we have a public service announcement from Stop, uh, from TVUP. TVUP, go ahead. Bye, po. Salamat, po. Mama, bayad, po. Ako, anak. Sabi mo na yan, para masuklian ko ang mga sakripisyo niya sa taong bayan. Mapagbigay po kayo. Nakikita ko ang mahal na mahal ninyo ang inyong pamilya. Tama ka. Kaya nag-aalala ako. Paano ba matatapos itong pandemyang to? Para matapos, umpisahan na ninyo. Magpabakuna na kayo. Dahil 
mahal ko kayo. Magpapabakuna ako. Nice. Thank you so yeah, thank much, EVUP. Uh, the, uh, the COVID Communication PSA is one of the many outputs of the UP research entitled Communicating COVID-19 in Post-Quarantine Philippines. It is headed by none other than our Vice President for Public Affairs at UP, Dr. Elena Pernia, and it's funded by the DOST PCHRD and the DOH under the AHEAD HSPR project. Over to you, Dr. Susie. Okay, thank you very much, Raymond, for that. Now, I think uh, we're almost at the top of the hour so we're going to we have actually two members of the philippine obstetrics and gynecological society who are going to ask some questions or make some very brief comments so raymond let's call on them now okay uh let's start po uh with uh, dr socorro uh bernardino uh, she is the former president of the pediatric and adolescent gynecology society of the Philippines uh, during the years 2018 to 2019. Dr. Sox? Okay, thank you, uh, Raymond, ano, for uh, for the introduction. Uh, I'd like to congratulate all the speakers. Uh, in, con in corollary with the objectives also of uh, the Society of Pediatric and Adolescent Gynecology as well as ng aming mother society, the Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society, na ang thrust natin is to really prevent teenage pregnancy. Marami po tayong natutunan. Uh, marami po, ta po tayong uh, natutunan na information. At the same time, we have also learned a lot of uh, tips and uh, the proponents na para ma-prevent ang ating teenage pregnancy. So with this, uh, I'd like just to share no, uh, what would be the effect ng uh, pandemic na ito sa atin. Uh, we have uh, data in one hospital, government hospital, wherein we have the section of pediatric and adolescent gynecology, kung saan we cater for teenage pregnant patients kasi high-risk pregnancy unit po kami. Uh, napansin po talaga namin that uh, the prevalence of teenage pregnancy from 2011 to 2019 has really increased uh, both as inpatient, when you say inpatient, your deliveries namin at the same time, yung aming OPD, for prenatal checkup. However, during the 2020 na start ng pandemic, it has decreased. Siguro kasi meron tayong lockdown. At the same time, mobility was also limited to these teenagers. Hindi sila pumapasok. But then, napansin na namin, ano, uh, pagdating ng January to June 2021, uh, from a 4% na OPD census namin ngayon, nasa 20% na siya. So I don't know if this is a significant thing. This is a one unit na data. But I guess siguro the, the reasons na sinabi po ni Yusek Perez kanina, uh, nagsaset in na yung limited RH services for these teens. So yan po ang aking masishare. Um, sana po hindi ganito ang trend, but nevertheless, we are seeing it. Ang aming prenatal checkups ng teens mas nag-increase na po ngayon, 2021. Okay. Uh, thank you for that uh, very, very quick reaction po, no, Dr. Asox. And uh, now, we'll like to hear from the POGS Regional Director for Region 10, Dr. Emelda Paz Carbajal. Dr. Carbajal? Yes, good afternoon. Uh, marami pong salamat sa pag dito sa webinar na to. And I am very glad to, to be here. Now, in terms of teenage pregnancy in our region, and uh, as mentioned uh, repeatedly by Yusek uh, Perez, me, uh, outside, outside the NCR, Mindanao is, uh, is one of the highest, uh, has one of the highest incidence of teenage pregnancy, and particularly Region 10 is the second uh, in the statistics. Now, uh, pagdating po dito sa pandemic, uh, we sti I still don't have the concrete data or the concrete statistics uh, with regards to the teenage pregnancy. But uh, the, informations, uh, the informations I gathered from the different area coordinators in our region, there is already a referral center which has a 12.07% uh, rate of teenage pregnancy from January to June. So that is still an alarming uh, figure. Now, because one in Cagayan de Oro City, because the, our referral, our hospital is a COVID referral center, maybe the decrease in the teenage pregnancy delivery is because of fear of uh, 
having the COVID and they have on, only 1.2%. Although, although our uh, advocacy programs are being implemented during, before the pandemic, but ju uh, before the pandemic, but during the pandemic, there is re the, the programs are really put on hold. However, there are really challenges that we were, uh, we encountered in the region because most of these teenage pregnancies are, uh, they come to the, they come in labor already very late and they don't have even the counseling in the primary health uh, centers. If they are, if they are being asked, if they were being counseled, they don't even, they are not being aware that they should be receiving uh, counseling with teenage pregnant, uh, pregnancy. And uh, they are not also, they don't even realize the impact and outcome of their behavior. Majority are also in days because uh, of the sudden shift from teenager to motherhood and they cannot even grasp the severity of their situations. So I think just like what Dr. Bernardino have said, we state we have uh, uh, received in, uh, teenage pregnancy uh, consultation, tumaas po yung consultation namin din. But although we don't have yet the exact figures, but we expect that. Now, in terms of... Uh, in our, we have our brothers and sisters in the uh, the Muslim areas. Teenage pregnancy is still expected because of their culture of the uh, and uh, the, the practice of uh, what they call this is uh, yung uh, yung parang uh, arranged marriages and sometimes it is being in the it being a uh, to settle dispute among families. So parang expected pa rin ang teenage pregnancy among them. But the, in our religion, just like the other uh, sectors, we want we also want to decrease the teenage pregnancy in our region because teenage pregnancy, by decreasing it, we also decrease the maternal morbidity and mortality in our region. And that is uh, contributing to the economy of our uh, country also. Um, that's all that I can share. Thank you very much, Dr. Carbajal. And uh, to the Philippine uh, Obstetrics and Gyne Obstetrical and Gynecological Society for your participation today. And, uh, you know, we're, we're really out of time, but I think um, everything starts with the discussion. And I think raising awareness of the problems, the issues, is, is enough for us today to be able to go back, think about what we need to do. And I think right now we're gonna ask um, for closing remarks. First, uh, so very brief, so we like a minute or less, a long message no, sa mga nanonood, no? We have frontliners, nurses, doctors, and people from all over the country who are watching. So what are your parting words for our audience today? We're gonna start with Mayor Ofel Alcantara. Ofel. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, Doc Susi, Susi, and that uh, team code. Ang masasabi ko as um, ang ating, uh, lalo na yung gumagawa ng programa, ay mas palawakin pero may tutok sa ating team. Okay, nag-freeze yata si Ovel. Yeah. Okay. Did you want to finish your, state, your sentence? Kasi medyo naputon. Palamin natin ang uh, alamin natin, yeah. Ah, ganun ba? Ngayon, how is it? How is it? Okay, is it better. better? Sabi mo, palawakin, ano? Palawakin ang, ka, palawakin ang kaalaman at tutok uh, para sa atin. Uh, maging ako as membro ng pamilya, so mag-umpisa tayo sa ating pamilya. Uh, mabantayan kasi kakaiba talaga ang ang teenage, itong group na ito, bigyan sila ng special attention at hindi lang yung pagsasalita but alamin ba, ba, base sa kilos ng ating mga kababaihan at kalalakihan din ng mga youth kasi ito ang kailangan matutukan sa family level pa lang. And paalamin agad sa amin, uh, lalo na sa aming nasa posisyon, nasa like ako as mayor at sa aming local government, this uh, ating tugunan agad para hindi mas maging problema. So, 
I thank you for this opportunity again to share and uh, patuloy. Uh, saludo ako sa inyo, Dr. Susie and Raymond and to all the team in this stop COVID death. COVID na, marami pang krisis. Tutukan at atin sugpuin. Maraming salamat po. Thank you very much. It's Mayor of El Alcantara. Let's go to a few closing remarks from uh, Dr. Joy Natividad. Dr. Joy. Okay. Raymond, no, wala ba si Dr. Okay. Joy Natividad? I'm here. There you go. Yeah. Yes, please. Your parting uh, words. My parting words is an appeal. The Young Adult Fertility and Sexuality Study is going on field despite the pandemic and they are going to the regions. So ang aking pakiusap sa inyo kung makikita niyo yung aming Nani. mga gathering team. Nani, hindi, 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 hindi maon ang video ko. Huh? Sana, yeah, if, if you can help in any way to facilitate the entry of our interviewers, into your areas if you ever if you encounter them mahirap po mag-survey ngayon pero kailangan natin gawin yun pong yaps ang isa sa mga pinakaimportanteng source ng data natin tungkol ta sa teenage pregnancy at kung ano ang nagda-drive ng trend na ito so sana po kung ma-encounter niyo sila ay uh, please and especially si mayor baka masample po si mayor ang inyong municipality or your friend mayors yung mga teams namin na pupunta sa Leyte i hope you can mabanggit niyo sa kanila para mapapasok yung aming mga interviewers for YAPS 5 thank you thank you very much let's have dr emma Lian. yes na yes <laughs> dr emma Lian, to your closing remarks We have Dr. Emma Raymond. Uh, I'm not seeing her. I'm still. She might have uh, fallen off. Disconnected, but uh, okay. We, we, so let's go to let's go to GP Perez. GP, uh, your closing remarks. You're on mute. Dr. GP, we can't okay. hear you, sir. Ah, uh, Yan, okay. That's. It. Anyway, thank you to the other reactors. And uh, I also learned from the reactions and from all the insights of uh, the audience. But my closing message here is that uh, teen pregnancy is not just a health problem. Very often we think uh, this, this is a health problem, but uh, it's beyond health. It must be addressed by other social sectors and different sectors in government. So... Um, let us uh, look at it as a, a problem that needs community and our individual actions. Magtulong-tulong tayo. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. That's Dr. G.P. Perez, the uh, Executive Director of POPCOM. And uh, last but not the least, Dr. Benjamin Cuenta, please, yeah. your closing remarks. Thank you, Dr. Susi. We now appreciate that the problem is really multi-sectoral. And therefore, uh, rather the approach must be multi-sectoral because the problem is going to linger. It will cross and um, generations from now if we don't do uh, something about it. And we have to start from somewhere. I can see here that um, the approach must be, as I've said, must be consolidated on a national level. And each stakeholder must be engaged with identified roles to play. So yun lamang po. And as, uh, as the head of the Philippine Obstetrical and Gynecological Society, I will reiterate again that the doors of POGS are always open for collaboration, not only to health societies like us, but more importantly, to government agencies who would like to tap us, tap our members, members numbering to about 4,890 across the country. We are very willing to work with you. Let's make a dent in this lifetime and not in the next. Let's, let's, see, the, let's see the difference that, that we can do all together during this lifetime. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Cuenca, the president of the uh, POGS. And um, Raymond, we'll launch our evaluation now. Uh, yes. 
Ito? Um, we're, we're seeing po uh, 630 plus of our at remaining attendees. Uh, for those who are still in the Zoom, please feel free to input your answers po. I'll just read off the questions. Number one, the panelists demonstrated thorough knowledge of the topic. Number two, the panelists were well prepared and organized. Number three, the panelists spoke clearly and audibly. Number four, the panelists use appropriate language with technical medical jargons adequately explained. And number five, contributed to new perspectives and knowledge on managing various key COVID-19 health issues. Over to you, Dr. Susie, for the introduction of our closing remarks speaker. Thank you very much, Raymond. And it's my honor to introduce our closing remarks speaker. Um, again, uh, this takes me back to the time of Secretary Flavier when the most successful family planning campaign was actually done under the wing of uh, our next speaker, Mike De La Rosa, who was working with the Johns Hopkins University on a campaign called Kung Sila'y Mahal Nyo Magplano. And um, he's now NEDA under Secretary for Corporate Affairs and takes this topic very dearly to close to his heart. He's very close to this issue and has really been championing the issue on family planning as a development issue. So uh, I'd like to welcome Under Secretary Mike De La Rosa. Mike, your closing remarks, please. Yes, good afternoon to everybody. Hello to my colleagues, to my UP colleagues. Actually, I wanted to wear my new UP t-shirt. <laughs> no, but uh, you know this is a wedding, so, and I am uh, representing you know NEDA. NEDA is the primary agency that's uh, heading the uh, population program now as chair of the PACOM board. And uh, to my colleague uh, Yuseka GP Perez, no, uh, to our actors, Mayor Idol Mayor uh, Ovel Alcantara, Doctor Doctor Mayor, ano eh, parang Ikaw na yung aking uh, uh, model ngayon no, ng uh, true uh, servant, no, government servant. And uh, to Dr. Natividad, Dr. Uh, Lianto, and of course, uh, Raymond. No? And of, of course, my favorite, uh, Doc Susi. And uh, Doc uh, Nenny Pernia, the VP of uh, UP now, uh, a pleasant afternoon. All of us witness how the COVID-19 wreaked havoc, havoc on the lives of the people. This pandemic affected every facet of our lives, but the most affected are the vulnerable population, the poor, the older persons, and even our young population. Our young population are affected by the pandemic, not in the way older persons and persons with comorbidities are affected but in other aspects such as in education and health, particularly on their access to reproductive health services. From the presentation, we learned that unintended pregnancy in itself is a great concern, having wide range of consequences for both the mother and her child. But it is far more worrying when the mother is still a child herself. We also learned that although the number of births have been declining for ages 15 to 19, Births from younger children are slowly increasing. The pandemic may exacerbate the issues as access to reproductive health information services have been a challenge among the youth, with further inaccessibility for essential sexual and reproductive health services because of mobility restrictions. This was est estimated to produce an estimated 102,000 unintended pregnancies last year alone. We are still unsure how these new quarantine measures will also impact these young people. To address these challenges, we at NEDA updated the Philippine Development 2017 to 2022 plan to ensure that the government strategies will be responsive to the new normal. Specifically, Chapter 13, reaching for the demographic dividend across all regions, highlights the use of innovative mechanisms to deliver reproductive health information and services, especially among the youth. These include the provision of helplines to provide information as well as referral services on family planning and the prevention of both adolescent pregnancy and gender-based violence. It also calls for the use of technology like online platforms and cell phone applications or apps to generate demand for services and for advocacy. We are glad that from the presentation of uh, a GP, most of these strategies are already being implemented. 
In addition, the national and local government units and its partners, the civil society organizations and international development organizations are working together for the full implementation of the Responsible Parenthood and Reproductive Health Law and Executive Order no Number 12, Attaining and Sustaining Zero Unmet Need for Modern Family Planning. The implementation of these policies are vital during the time of pandemic to ensure that individual reproductive health rights are being fulfilled. We also included projects and initiatives that further improve the delivery of reproductive health services in the updated Public Investment Program 2017 to 2022, such as the National Program on Population and Family Planning, which addresses teenage pregnancy. Although we are currently facing enormous challenges as we are competing with other pressing priorities brought by COVID-19 pandemic, we managed to pursue the reproductive health agenda for young people. The signing of the Executive Order 141, adopting as a national priority the implementation of measures to address the root causes of the rising number of teenage pregnancies and mobilizing government agencies for their purpose indicates the government's commitment to strengthen its interventions to ensure the development of our adolescent population. We thank PAPCOM and the other members of the, uh, of the Board of Commissioners for their relentless efforts to ensure the signing of this EO by the President. Now that the policies and programs are in place, we hope that these are appropriately implemented and further is strengthened, especially during this time of pandemic. I would like to thank the UPNIH for spearheading the conduct of this webinar series. I also extend appreciation to our reactors who gave valuable insights on the issue at hand. Activities such as this serve as a venue for the RH and youth advocates as well as the general public to learn about current government initiatives and know how they can participate and advocate for it. We encourage everyone, especially the adolescents, to support the implementation of the identified reproductive health policies and programs. These are key elements towards the attainment of the sustainable development goals as well as the realization of our ambition 2040, you know, of having a matatag, baginhawa, at panatag na buhay. In closing, thank you to all. You know, uh, I had been in the program for a long time, and I am really glad that you know we, we have we still have the champions around. Mabuhay tayong lahat, mabuhay ang programa. Maraming salamat. Thank you very much. That's Under Secretary Mike De La Rosa of uh, the National uh, Economic and Develop Economic and Development Authority (NEDA), and uh, for that for that closing and that reassurance that this is really seen by the government as an integral part of our development. All right, so I think we are going to, um, okay, so next week, don't miss it. Nako, balik tayo sa bakuna. We will talk next week about ilan na nga ba talaga ang bakunado. And we will have, uh, I believe we're going to have the Department of Health. We are trying to get some of the local governments to talk about this and continue to persevere in getting more people vaccinated. So. Um, don't miss it next week. We'll see you on uh, Friday. Raymond, over to you. Thank you, Dr. Susie. We are seeing uh, very, very consistent results po, no? Uh, as regards the evaluation poll. Maraming salamat po to the 924 attendees who were able to key in their answers for our evaluation of our panelists. And thank you from the bottom of our heart. Thank you po for the extensive and comprehensive uh findings and also updates from each and every one of our resource speakers uh, we did when we were trying to plan this we did not anticipate that this would be a hot topic but uh, just seeing all of the reactions from the chat uh, it was really very well received uh, so maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat before we conclude our program uh, let us first acknowledge the following uh, these are the individuals po, or the groups uh, really who are making a difference in making sure that our learning series is possible and uh, together with each and every one of you who constitute our credible online community, maraming maraming salamat po. And then finally, all Stop COVID Deaths webinar see, uh, webinars from number 1 to number 64 and then after this webinar po, number 65, 
will be archived and can be viewed po uh, at any time at the YouTube channel of TVUP. Uh, if you are having any trouble po, just go to www.youtube.com and then look for the TVUP uh, page and you'll be able to see it. I just want to give a quick shout out to those who have uh, registered and are attending po all the way from San Marcelino District Hospital in Zambales. Santa Rosa Community Hospital in Laguna, Dr. Gomercindo Garcia Senior Memorial Hospital in Cabantalan, Negros Occidental, from Mindanao State University College of Medicine in Iligan, Lanao del Norte, and Cotabato Regional Medical Center in Cotabato from Barm. Internationally, also, National Center for Global Health and Medicine from Tokyo, Japan, Academia Sinica in Taipei, Taiwan, VISM Hospital Gwalior, India, Bangkok, Thailand, Abu Dhabi, and Dubai. Uh, ingat po kayo ating mga kababayan, OFWs from Al-Osra Medical Center, Saudi Arabia, Lunichi Ali University of Blida 2, Algeria, bago po yun, University of Fiji in Lautoko, Fiji, St. Catharines from Canada, and from Johannesburg in South Africa. So this brings, uh, this formally brings our webinar to a close. Makita-kita po tayo ulit next week. Same time, same channel. Uh, every Friday from 12 noon to 2 p.m. It's a date. Together we can stop COVID deaths. So keep safe, keep healthy, and see you online. The enemy remains unseen. I'll keep your hand in mine. Let's say a prayer one more time. I know you long for home, but I am here, you're not alone. I'll stay with you until the coast is clear. The others pain before my fears, the others laugh before my tears, but right behind the mask, I look into myself and ask. Do I have strength to carry on? My God, how long will this go on? I need you here to keep me strong. I'm here to hold the line. I'll keep my word until my time. Just look into my eyes and say his name to realize. It's fine to be afraid. Just hold on to the word he gave. This time will come to pass Cause this salvation's made to last He'll carry you to see the break of day The others pain before my fears The others vows before my tears But right behind the mask I look into myself and ask do I have strength to carry on? But God, how long must this go on? I need you here to keep me strong. I'm here to hold the line. I'll keep my word until my head dies. From my fears, the others laughs before my tears, but right behind the mask, I look into myself and ask, Do I have strength to carry on? But God, how long must this go on? I need you here to keep me strong. I'll keep my word, you would is mine. The others pain from my fears. Pushing on the spine of tears Please take us through another day Just hold my hand And I will hold the line I will hold